Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Jason. Welcome. This is Big Zai Pottery. Um, I wanted to make, well, I was trimming plates uh, tonight. It's a little bit later in the evening. It's actually 1120. And either way, I was trimming plates and um, I thought it might be beneficial to uh, kind of talk through in greater detail uh, some of the decisions I'm making while I'm trimming these plates and why I'm doing the specific things I'm doing and maybe it'll help uh, anybody out there who might have uh, might want to think about trimming a little bit differently. Um, so anyways, uh, these are kind of standard dinner plates. They're going to be about ten and a half inches when it's all said and done when they've been uh, glaze fired and I'm using this wonderful Giffen grip here saves me a bunch of time um, so let's just jump right into it uh, so what I try and do is um, and I've learned over the years with plates and I and of course you know I have not been doing this relatively speaking I haven't been doing this that long but uh, that the foot doesn't want to be too far in whoops let's get these things actually taut and centered here. There we go. Um, the foot doesn't want to be too far in, otherwise you'll have a wobbly plate if you're, you know, eating on the edges or putting any pressure on the edges. If the foot's too far in, uh, the balance is just going to be weird. If the foot's too far out, um, I think it looks weird. And also, uh, besides that, um, in a dish rack, as you're trying to actually stand it up in a dish rack, uh, it doesn't quite work. It'll just flop forward. So you need enough, in my opinion, again, to take this with a grain of salt, um, you need enough space from the rim or the lip of the plate to the foot so that it'll nest down in somewhere. Also, uh, kind of a, you know, a wish list of mine is to have those cool cabinets where you actually just slide plates in because most of the plates that we own, actually all the plates that we own, at our home are all handmade from various potters from uh, a lot from here in the Midwest, Minnesota, Wisconsin, uh, but also kind of around the country, uh, we collect a bit. So um, I kind of eyeball it. Uh, this, comes, this, this has come with a little bit of experience, but what I've found is that this trimming tool, um, the length of this sort of set up, you know, the length of this from this little pad here on the Giffen grip to where it sort of lands when I keep carving down tends to do the trick as far as the general width of at least these dinner plates. So I'm really just going to take material off. I'm not really trying to, um, I'm not really trying to be super, uh, super precise right now. Just trying to get some material off of there. And as you can see, so right about here is, you know, just a bit more than the width of the trimming tool itself. And that feels about right. The balance of it just to my eye feels about right. So all I do is I get, I get this line established, this foot line. This will be the, the exterior of the foot ring. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to, uh, you know, a smaller trimming tool and I'm basically going to use the width of this tool to come at, whoop, bear with me. Sorry about that. The shop has a heater. It's real loud. Um, I'm going to use the width of this tool to come at it from an angle like this. And then I'm actually going to turn it in and that's going to give me the depth of the foot ring. I hope that makes sense. You'll see what I'm saying here in a second. So I'm going to start here lined up on this outside kind of point that I've established, carve in, and then just turn the tool. And that's the depth of my foot ring right there. Okay. Um, now the next thing, my next goal is to take the low spot here and make this make sense with the lip here. Um, and so I want to carve away all this material and have it actually look like it makes sense. Um, I'm, I'm actually trying to mirror 
the curve of the plate on the interior. So, and you can hear the tool kind of clacking off of these pads here. They're gonna leave a weird mark. Sometimes it leaves a, a weirder mark than most. When these are bone dry, I actually take a sanding block and sand that down a little bit. Um, but I'm applying very little pressure. Uh, the reason I'm barely applying any pressure is I don't like to trim too dry, and so these have a little bit of moisture in them, and they're actually a little soft yet. If I if I push too hard, you'll see it on the inside of the plate. So I'm just trying to be patient and taking a little bit of clay at a time, and I'm actually toggling the angle of this tool. Um, my thumb right here too is actually kind of investigate you know it's it's sort of a little subconscious but i'm also sort of just feeling what that what that what that angle feels like while i'm trimming and then i will also come across you get to see this wonderful angle and kind of eyeball it and see what it looks like from there from the side and just kind of envision what it would look like so a little bit at a time, it looks pretty decent. There's actually a slight hump right here that if I play my cards right, I can just rest the tool on there with the weight of my hand and that seems to take care of it. Okay, cool. I, I am a big proponent of quitting while you're ahead. I am, I am actually really good at over tinkering. This feels like it's pretty good uh, as it stands. And the next thing, the next move I'm gonna make is I'm gonna take this smaller rib tool I'm gonna work from the inside and I'm gonna start trimming out until it looks about right as far as the thickness of, uh, of the foot ring. So I always start from the inside, just work my way out, and then once I hit that thickness, once I think it looks about right, I just dive down like that until I feel like I've matched this depth of the exterior here. So I just kind of push that tool down and this again comes with experience, comes with the, a lot of practice, but it, you'll be able to kind of see it. You'll be able to see that the depth here and the depth here are pretty much the same. Um, I was taught the idea of a foot ring is to look like the piece is one piece in and of itself with just a foot ring kind of placed on there. So you want this internal sort of arch uh, in whatever shape, a bowl, a plate, whatever, to kind of just keep flowing off the end there and the foot ring just happens to be there. Um, the next thing, so now I've established the foot ring and the kind of the general sort of dimensions of it. I need to get rid of some of this clay in here, obviously. I could sit and go back and forth with this flat end the whole time. There's a quicker way to remove some material because this is the first thing that I know. I know I need to get material out of the middle and this is, as you can hear, this is the thinnest part of the pot right here. Um, I need to get some material out of here, but I need to be very careful that I'm not taking too much material out of there. So what I'll do is I'll turn the tool so I'm using this sort of a sharper angle, and I'll just kind of go broad strokes and take some material off. I'm not quite trying to match that angle just yet. I'm just making sure that the middle I'm making sure the middle is lower than this level so that when I glaze it and I go to glaze fire it, I've had it to where this is way too shallow as compared to the foot ring and this will actually fuse to the kiln shelf and that uh, potentially ruins the shelf. It 100% ruins the plate. Um, so I'm trying to obviously avoid that. So I'm just doing sort of broad stroke moves here where I'm getting rid of material. And then as I get toward toward the foot ring, I'm applying a little bit more pressure because I do want that arching down. Now I have this little lip right here. Um, I am not going to do the real broad strokes trimming toward the foot. Uh, I've had it happen a few, I've had it happen more than a few times where I've caught and then all of a sudden this angle catches the foot ring and, and cuts it and destroys it. So I'm gonna slow down here a little bit Use this side because I have a bit more control of it. I'm gonna match that depth right there. So I carve down and I've got a kind of a sharp angle here, steeper angle, and then broad surface and take those ridges out like that, okay? 
it's always a good sort of habit to get into to, to understand what it sounds like as far as the different thicknesses. I can tell this is, here, hold on. You can hear that lower tone where there's more clay and that higher tone where there's less clay. You'll kind of get an understanding of how thick it is. I really can't take any more clay away from the center and I really am applying almost no pressure because if I push too hard, you'll end up with a ring right here that actually pushes up and you'll see this ridge and this ring on the floor of the pot. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. This is just a personal point of preference. I like a form that like tapers in. And so what I'm gonna do with this smaller trimming tool is I'm just gonna cut an angle there. I'm gonna cut an angle there and that's it. I'm using my fingers to sort of smooth. So this clay body in particular has some more grog in it. It has some larger particles. And I don't wanna take this right out of the uh, gif and grip right now, but hopefully you can kind of see the grog here and where the tool actually cuts it, it'll drag larger pieces of grog and you'll get these holes. If you don't seal these up, it doesn't necessarily look terrible, but some glazes, you'll actually get air bubbles that'll form and you'll get little, it'll just kind of, it's not necessarily the, the surface I'm going for on these particular plates. And so what I'm going to do is use any piece of wood. I'm, I'm positive I'm using this tooling correctly. Uh, but it's just a piece of wood or a piece of plastic or something. And I'm just going to, I'm not applying any pressure. I'm just resting against the clay and the surface. And I'm sealing up those kind of drag marks. Just like that, okay? Um... With this one, again, you can see these ridges. I'll sand these off at the end. It, it dragging that wooden tool definitely uh, sealed up some of them, not all of them, but I do like a little bit of a, a, a sort of a homemade rustic look to it. And then again, this is kind of what I'm working with at the end. Um, my forms, my plates, you know, everything in general, it's always kind of evolving. And I kind of just roll my maker's mark there on the end. Um, I'm going to fly through one more of them without sort of common, you know, the commentary and, uh, and give you an idea of the flow of it. <clears throat> but again, I thought it might be beneficial for some people uh, or whoever uh, might enjoy these videos. And again, if you do, like, subscribe, share, all the fun things. Uh, ways to support the channel down in the description. Um, I thought it would be kind of sweet, kind of sweet to just communicate the real specific thoughts that go through my head and and rationale for why I'm making some of the moves I'm making. And it's not sometimes it feels random, but I I realized today as I was as I was trimming plates, there are very specific reasons why I do certain things. So and I may have gone too deep on that one. We'll see what happens. But again, I found too the more of a, a rhythm and kind of a, a system you can you can get into. Yeah, I may have gone a little too deep. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, it's like this step, this step, this step, this step. That seems to work for my brain. It may not work for everybody, but it definitely puts me in a place where I'm in a rhythm. When I'm making pots, when I'm trimming pots, um, there we go. Just something that is a little bit more uh, systematic and that way I can refine things and it's not like completely random. So you'll notice too, I slow the wheel down, I speed it up. It just depends on what I'm doing. If I'm just trying to get rid of material quickly and I don't really have to be mindful or careful I will kind of give it, give it the business and just ramp it up a bit. Um, if I'm doing something like this, where I kind of, 
I don't like full symmetry. I like to kind of bounce tools and leave some funkiness in there. Oh, I forgot to mention, when I'm trimming the inside here too, my left hand, because again, I'm primarily right-handed, my left hand, my fingers, they're also kind of uh, feeling, and I'm, I'm looking for feedback. I'm trying to feel that curve and feel if it just feels right. That's another way um, that while I'm trimming, I'm also sort of, sort of investigating the pot. There's little burrs of clay on here. There's little nuggets that I'm not super fond of. Um, I'll take care of those when it's bone dry. If I sit and try and fuss with it now, I'm just gonna do more damage than good. And then, little maker's mark. I like to put it on the foot ring right there. Um, I've found if I don't put it on the foot ring, if I try and put it on this part or this part or somewhere else, it will show up on the inside. And again, with functional pots, uh, plates, bowls, whatever, the inside is for food. The inside is for, um, you know, actually like, it's, it's the functional part of it as well. It's the main functional part of the piece. I don't want any disturbances in there besides my little wonky swirly thing. So again, I hope you enjoyed this. I know you had to stare at my hands the whole time. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your attention. I appreciate you. Uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, hit the notifications. New videos coming up all the time. Have a great night. Appreciate you.